have I got an adventure for you guys. I'm here at a location that's a short ferry ride over from South Australia's mainland. I grew up in Adelaide and this place has been on my bucket list for a very long time. I'm so excited to be here. I'm here on Kangaroo Island. I've got seven nights here and I cannot wait to show you the adventures I get up to here on the island. Now, I took the ferry ride over on my van and if you know me, you know I'm not great at planning the things that I'm going to do when I arrive on my trip. So, Kangaroo Island Ferry Terminal has it sorted for me and I picked up this amazing guide to tourism on Kangaroo Island. This guide is fantastic. It's so well laid out and it has everything you need inside to plan your stay here on Kangaroo Island. So, where are we going next? Um, I don't even know yet. I'm gonna have to consult my tour guide. Um, I'll get back to you on that. Stay tuned and let's go explore Kangaroo Island. Okay, my first stop was to buy more honey. There are a few things that you can't take on the island and honey is one of them. So I had to replace my tube. Now around here, there's amazing local honey makers. A lot of them come in jars and I don't like buying glass jars for my van. Things tend to break in glass. I was looking for one of those plastic squeeze tube. So I had to go to the local IGA here they still sell the local Kangaroo Island honey, but they do have one in squeeze tubes, so there's a tip for you. Okay, here is my first official adventure. I'm here on Kangaroo Island's Sculpture Trail. The trail showcases works from local artists inspired by the area. Now, it's not a long walk, it's only 1.5 kilometres, but it's very steep and there are a lot of stairs. So take it easy and appreciate the views on this sculpture trail. Another addition to the sculpture walk are these haikus scattered around the trail. They were written by a local poet, Bev Wilson, and she grew up here, so they were all inspired by her memories of this whole area. I'm gonna read this one to you, let's see how I go. Summer has arrived when salmon schools cruise the bay and boys hunt for lost lines. I don't know if I should give up my career as a vlogger and turn to poet. Um, I think I'll leave that to Bev. I'm headed to my first campsite and I've made a pit stop along the way. I've driven just that little bit further to Cape Willoughby Lighthouse. So that's it behind me. Now, Cape Willoughby Lighthouse was pretty important for the state. It was the first lighthouse that was installed in South Australia and that was in 1852. Now, the lighthouse was a major breakthrough in protecting coastal shipping in these waters. To get this close to the lighthouse, there is an entry fee. It's not too steep though. It it cost me $5.50 to get back up here so I can see the lighthouse real up close and it also comes with a self-guided hike. Cape Willoughby Light Station Heritage Hike will take you around the coast to the original light station settlement. It will give you an insight into the early lightkeepers lives and how the demanding routine and sense of isolation was heightened by the distance between their homes and the lighthouse. 
There are various stop posts along the trail just like this one and they match up to the points in your guide so you can follow along and find out what happened in this area during the time. So this one is all about the shipwrecks that were spotted from this view and it details the journal entries that were taken when the lighthouse assistants spotted those shipwrecks along the sea. too much into history and when I travel I tend to avoid the museums and the history tours but this one has been really interesting. I love how they set up this trail and this guide that you can follow along yourself and stop at various points and learn about the area during those times. Now I'm not going to spoil it, I want you guys to add this to your list when you visit Kangaroo Island but on this trail I've already learned how they ship in cargo from the waters and also how they used to pull up fresh water for the lighthouse workers and the people in this area. Really cool trail, add it to your list. I'm here at Anti Chamber Bay campsite and this is a cool little campsite. You can see my van parked right behind there. So I've booked online. It's a national parks area here. So campsites must be booked in advance and online you get to see pictures of your campsite. So this one here is campsite number one. It's a smaller campsite, but it's all I need for my van. And it's actually really great. I think it's the best of the pick. If you've got a bigger setup, you want to choose one of the higher numbers because they are bigger areas. But for my sprinter, this is all I need. It's quite a secluded area. Uh, the ground is flat. Uh, I'm a happy camper. So here at Anti Chamber Bay, there's a picnic area just above my campground, which has a cooktop, barbecue area and tables. And there's also a bathroom a little further along, just toilets only. Uh, but here, I think it's all you need. I didn't realise before, but Anti Chamber Bay is so close to Chapman River. So it's a short walk over the bathrooms to the Chapman River Bridge. And that leads us to our next campsite that I'm gonna stay tomorrow, which is Chapman River Campground. I'm here at Prospect Hill. Now this is the highest point on Kangaroo Island. Now it was given that name by Matthew Flinders when he was exploring Southern Australia in 1802. Now he hiked up to the top of the hill to get a better view of the island. Now the hike up is not so far. It's only 250 metres up, but it's pretty steep. There's 500 steps to get up to the top, but up the top, we're gonna get 360 degree views of Kangaroo Island. 
Spoiler alert, I don't know if those steps were included in the 500. I've just spotted this giant staircase behind me here. I think that's where the 500 steps are. Let's go. Look at this view, isn't it incredible? If you're struggling up those 500 steps, just have a think about Matthew Flinders. He did it no steps. That would have been way tougher. That hill is quite steep. Now, when you're on the platform here, there's quite a bit of info about the area and about the history, including the notion that Matthew Flinders, was he Australia's first backpacker? probably was. Uh, a lot of the things that he did uh, is the same that backpackers and hikers today do to this day. So a uh, pretty cool piece of history for Australia. Now today was originally planned as a beach day. I had four beaches on my hit list and I started off at Browns Beach. The sky was gloomy and grey. The wind was shocking. It was terrible for a beach day. So I thought all oh, this cloud cover, perfect weather to hike up to Prospect Hill. So I headed that way and what happened? Uh, the clouds disappeared, the sun came out and it was super hot. Um, anyway, I thought let's keep trucking, but now I'm at Emu Bay Beach. I was trying to tell you here that I'm about to head to a pretty cool beach. It just made top of the list of Australia's best beaches. Well, the weather hasn't improved, but the vlog must go on. And I think I've got an adventure for you that's going to make up for the lack of blue skies. So I'm at Stokes Bay, and I teased this earlier, but Stokes Bay has a beach that just made it to number one of Australia's top beaches in 2023. And I'm up for the challenge to find Stokes Bay Beach. Now I say that because I have never been to a beach that is quite hard to get to actually. So you've got to navigate through bushes and rocks and climb through a cave to get to this beach. Uh, so let's get underway and I'll show you how to access the number one beach in Australia. Okay, so I'm walking through the cave now and the story goes the residents in the area loved this beach but they found it so challenging to get to. So in 1947, there were a team of about six volunteers who actually carved this path to make access for the beach a lot more easier. All the work was done by hand tools. So they used hammers and chisels to carve away the hard exterior of the rock and axes to cut away the soft interiors. I think this is about the coolest access to get to a beach I've ever seen. Okay, I think we're nearing the end. Let's show you the big reveal.
beach and there really is no other access. Crawling through those caves are the only way to get to Stokes Bay Beach. But what do you guys think? Do you guys think this deserves the top spot on Australia's best beaches? I don't know how they vote for these beaches, but it definitely has the most interesting access I've ever seen. I started my day here at Remarkable Rocks. Now I aim to get here for a sunrise shoot and I was a little bit late, half an hour after sunrise, but I'm here and I've actually got the whole place to myself. It is stunning here. It is so peaceful and calm. Uh, you'll see behind me the, the iconic of the rock formations here. So many photographs have been taken in that spot. Now, Remarkable Rocks has been on a journey for more than 500 million years. They say that the, the wind and the rain and the salt have changed these rocks uh, to what they are today. And many of these rocks, uh, you can see the iconic one behind me. I'll put up a pic of what it was years and years ago and here it is today. Uh, you can see how much it's changed, but these rocks are absolutely stunning and what a wonderful place to start the day. A must add on your list when you visit Kangaroo Island. Now I've driven five minutes down the road to another iconic location here on Kangaroo Island. Behind me is Cape de Kudik Lighthouse and I'm doing the Cape de Kudik hike down to the water's edge and that's where we're going to find another iconic photographic location, Admiral's Arch. I'm sure you've seen pictures of this one. This one is really stunning. The walk down to Admiral's Arch isn't that far. It's only one kilometre down, uh, but if you don't want to do the trail, there's a second car park right by the boardwalk that accesses Admiral's Arch. Cape de Kudik is the best place to watch Australia's three species of pinnipeds, Australian fur seals, long-nosed fur seals and Australian sea lions. The reason the fur seals congregate here is that they love flat rocks. Sea lions come here to rest between trips to their breeding colonies. I'm here by Admiral's Arch and it's so beautiful to see with not so many people around. I was here yesterday and there were a few tour buses so I got crowds of people. There were more fur seals yesterday on the rocks, not so many this morning, uh, but here by Admiral's Arch I spotted a few down underneath the arch and there was actually one really active one. It was so beautiful to watch. My time
time here on Kangaroo Island has come to an end. I'm on my last day here and I'm at Vivon Bay. Now the blue skies have finally come out and the sun is starting to heat up. I think it's going to be a pretty nice beach day which is pretty exciting. So Vivon Bay Beach is right by Vivon Bay campsite. Now there's a bunch of campsites that's run by Kangaroo Island. You can't book these ones so you just have to turn up. There's self pay stations at each site. They all have toilets and barbecue facilities. Some of them, like Vivon Bay, have showers and they also have powered sites. So that could be an option for you. Now, normally I go through my highlights of my time here and I don't know if I want to do that because I think I really enjoyed everything I did here on Kangaroo Island. What were your favourites? I probably have to note that going to Remarkable Rocks for Sunrise was a really special experience. I really enjoyed my time there and having the whole space to myself was something pretty unique uh, and really lovely. So before I leave, I am going to tell you my top three tips on things that you probably don't know when coming to Kangaroo Island. So I've already mentioned that you have to give up a few things. So honey and potatoes are the big things. Uh, when you hand them over there, you obviously want to replace them um, on Kangaroo Island. All the honey farmers aren't close to the ferry terminal, so you're gonna to have to drive a bit further to replace your honey. My tip for you is to go to the local IGA that's just down the road at Penny Shore and stock up on all the things you handed over when you jumped on the ferry. That leads to tip number two. Make sure you bring enough food. So supermarkets are really sparse on Kangaroo Island. Um, I stayed at the campgrounds and every campground I stayed at, there was wasn't a restaurant or cafe nearby so I pretty much cooked all my meals myself. That means I had to have enough food to take me through the time that I spent here. Um, as I said I spent seven nights here and last night I was pretty much scraping the barrel so make sure you pack enough food to last for your trip. And then my third tip for you is about fuel. Fill up your tank before you come onto the island. There are a few fuel stations. There's one at Penny Shore and there's a couple others around but like supermarkets they're pretty sparse. Uh, I thought my tank would get me to the end of my trip. Um, yesterday I had 50 k's left on the tank and I didn't think I was going to go back to the ferry so I googled the closest fuel station and it was 30 k's away. Uh, it was a pretty nervous drive for me to see if I would make it. So if you see a fuel station even if you've got half a tank or three quarters full just fill up because you might not know when you're going to see another one. There's plenty of other things to do here on Kangaroo Island. You'll have to consult that guide that I mentioned at the start of the vlog that has all your adventures outlined in it so you can plan a really different trip to what I did. But you know me, I like my hikes and my beaches and nature so that's what I chose to focus on on my time here. I hope you enjoyed my time here on Kangaroo Island and I'll see you next time.